Why did I do Flower Drill? It was a short film competition on TikTok. I was in a hotel room and I thought to myself, well, this is the perfect time to stretch myself and do a short film that I hadn't planned for with exactly what you have, which is something I really admire about certain filmmakers that you just like do the best project with what you have. But everything that is in this film except for the flowers, it was found either in my suitcase or in the hotel room. And because I was visiting my family, I get to see aspects of you know planning script writing um, and shooting and then editing and if they so wish they could have an input on what you know the final project product which happily did end up happening there's a light coming from the purse and that light sheds light literally metaphorically onto the book called the Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle and it's a book that is just changing my life on the daily really because I keep reading it. I quite like the background. I thought about putting a white sheet um, it, on the floor to sort of have a more polished look in a way um, because obviously the background is, is a patterned rug and so um, perhaps that could take away from the element but I quite liked it that it would it kind of looked like green and and nature a little bit which will be a reflection of the last frame so I was like okay no let's go with this one um again everything every object here is from my suitcase so we have greens purples and whites which are the colors of the suffragettes which is very important for me and again you see the pads as well which um i'm all for not having taboos regarding periods of and and womb is a key element throughout this film as we see also there's white cables that sort of surround the main character and this will we'll talk about a lot but um but it's um, this sort of is also meant to represent the womb. She's wearing this like long maxi dress. I, I would think that to to go with like old classical um, styles, but also I, I, um, I think visually for, for me, I quite like Klimt because of the angle where it's shot and also just the positioning and, 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 and objects around it. So in order to shoot this, I grabbed the floor lamp and I put it on the tall drawers in front of the TV and it was sort of dangling like half on the air and then I clipped uh, my phone so that it would be hanging off of the lampshade. Colors are very, very impactful like in my life, but specific, specifically in this short film. Uh, we'll go, we'll, we'll see the changes that the character goes through physically on like on the clothes. The character changes their clothes three times and also the editing changes uh, the sort of the color and also the makeup. So the makeup here, so she's wearing green, she has a uh, green eyeshadow, but also the saturation, the color uh, editing of this part is more towards green also the cables that I mentioned you know this 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 whole shape that could be a womb but it's also you know they're tech cables they're iPhone cables a MacBook charger and in the watch charger you know it could also say um, say this delineation of a safe space you know how uh, you put salt and then the snail can't cross or um, a chalk circle and the ant sort of you know stuck there um, that's kind of what we're going for with this cable situation because um, sometimes whether it's tech that makes us feel safe and we sort of can uh, control things say for instance if I'm working from home there's no one home I could potentially you know control the temperature perhaps during the pandemic or because of the tech becoming such a huge part of our lives that we can sort of get so much done working on screens that you know perhaps this womb this sort of safe warm space can also impede us from actually being courageous enough to live outside of our comfort zone which would be this sort of womb space in this case when we have like bad mental health uh, we see that it's really hard to actually leave the space and even though this character is able to leave this space delineated by cables she'll find it really hard to actually exit the room and that's why it's because of mental health and, and perhaps because of the pandemic that it's easier to like stay indoors or we, we were forced to stay indoors and then suddenly you know a, a lifestyle change where we're now going outside my in my personal case I, I, I dealt with emetophobia which is a phobia of th throwing up but there, um, I I found a course that basically like cures emetophobia 
homophobia and I was like oh my gosh I've lived my no like how many years probably like 20 something years with that phobia and I didn't know there was a cure for it so having this delineation of safe space the womb you know I would stop doing things that could trigger the emotophobia to feel safe so for instance you suddenly stop going out because you don't want to be around drunk people stop doing certain jobs because I didn't want to be you know that possibility of feeling sick I would stop using certain public transportation stop eating certain type of food stop and so because you try to feel safe um, you suddenly realize oh I'm not living my full life I'm living a sort of safe life uh, safe but it's 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 not because you're constantly then bumping into the edges of what you said you you wouldn't do so that's when you know that it's like okay something needs to change when one is fresh out the womb the heart is loud you just know what you want you go for it now decades later the brain is loud you just know what you should do and you think hey you should do this awesome thing no but you fail what about this other one it looks safer yeah but it sucks and look it goes back into the safe womb right but this time her head is towards the bottom and that's actually the position for birthing so it's kind of like ha 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 will there be a birth soon if we follow this metaphor of the womb okay now we'll see the color change you suck it goes into uh, less vibrant colors more like purple hues tones um and and we'll see but she's holding the flower so we saw that she was wearing the green dress and the color editing on the first part was green and she was wearing green makeup and now we see that the color is more purple but also colder and she'll grab her purple coat and her makeup will be purple. Why purple? Purple is a color of transmutation of energy and we'll, we'll see that she's changing from this green that even though it's also life affirming green, it's also like can be stuck you know like a pond that's super green and even though there's a lot of life there it also means there's sort of stagnated waters and uh and perhaps even a little bit sick because there's life but it's it's not really flowing it's just stagnated which is exactly her situation she's stagnant she's she knows there's something wrong she knows that something needs to change but she's still like sort of like that you know breathe breathe in this brain fog, brain lull, heart And which she still tries to open the door and still hesitates, but because it's a real life physical situation, aka the fire alarm going off, she actually has the strength to like push through. Well, sometimes life does that for ourselves. Like we tend to get really comfortable in the life situation that we're in, say because we're momentarily successful or things are going to sort of planned. Um, but life will always bring us the perfect challenge to make us grow. Our need to have certainty and control certain things just, again, stagnates things, doesn't allow life to flow. Fear generated, really. Um, so in the end, we'll see how she's liberated from all this. I, I, I quite like the purple and, and a green that sort of take over the frame here. And obviously, we see that she's, you know, clenching because it's a stressful situation for her. It's like the first, you know, first time she's actually like leaving this space. Who, God knows how long she's been there, probably like months. And this is not meant to be a situation that is uh, real. It's a metaphor, it's a story, it's a script. And it is not meant to be exactly like what people's lives are like. Dead. This hellscape is me. Yeah, inside so now my we head. see that she's outside and we shoot from the top to make her seem really small, like a child and vulnerable, which is exactly how she's feeling. And to get that shot, I wrapped uh, this tripod with flexi legs that you can sort of wrap around things through the phone. And so wrapped it around a tree branch. And actually my sister woke me up at 1 a.m. to actually get these shots because we were meant to shoot at night. and. Uh, and the, because we were in front of a hospital, there was a nurse that was jogging, uh, focusing on the color purple, the purple color. And she sees, she spots the same flower that was in her book. Um, 
in another version of this short film, we saw that there was a hand of a man that gave her a flower, but it was an older man, an elderly man. And so she has a flower, she's thinking about the flower, um, you're perhaps missing this this person. And then she sees the flower and it's sort of saying like, well, perhaps it's gonna be okay. It's so alluring with its fake, soft comfort. One day, boom. She's still holding the um, coat due to the continuity. She can free themselves from mental health because change is possible. That's the moral of the story. An uncertainty, alive, truly, goosebumps, peaceful and carefree. She puts the flower um, into a little glass with water to sort of give it more Takes a few life. tries to really and be she there herself sometimes. puts herself in water, a bath, to give herself more life. But I am not giving up my one chance this life. Finally, this is a frame that sort of uh, mirrors, but in opposite, the first frame, which is, um, you know, this part, this this womb. But now the delineation is not a white cable of technology, but it's actually flowers, and she's also outside. And we see now the editing, you know, it's it's uh, sort of brighter, and we'll see that her head is outside of of the delineation, which is kind of like showing that. But it's a small detail. She's cool. I mean, it's okay to have paradigm. We all have paradigms and, and rules that we make in our heads um, that help us see reality. And hers are now kinder. I'm not giving up my one chance this life. Now that one is out of the womb. Talking about being out of the womb, being really alive in this world. Shout out my sister for the music, Anais Ust and my mom also for, uh, she recorded all the day scenes in. and Anais helped me with the night shoots. Hopefully this has encouraged you to try out and shoot your own things and for the projects that I'm going further in the future, I'm just really going to hone in into the story, 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 story first and then having those elements add to the story um, because then it becomes a different project, right? You want to make a film storyline or do you want to make a more artsy project? Um, both are okay, but just understanding where you want to go. You never know who might be going through something similar, which might they might find helpful. And uh, ultimately, we are not the judge um, of, I mean, we can be the judges of our own work and hold ourselves to a certain standard. But at the same time, I've met few, a lot of artists that never want to share their work publicly because they think it's not good enough. I met this artist and I was like, oh my gosh, like I, I, genuinely love your fine art work. I think the world's a better place because I get to see this work. This is amazing. And this person's like, oh, I'll never share it though. Oh, I can't even send it to you. And that's totally fine. That's like their prerogative. That's their decision. You, you know, people don't owe anything to the public or, or to anybody else, really. You can do it for yourself. But if you can be generous enough to, to say, and I guess brave enough because when you put something out there, you, you're going to put, you know, people are going to judge it and that's fine. It's just, um, you never know if it will, you know, make some someone's day, one person. And that, um, and that'd be great. That's a minute that you'll get to decide why, why you do what you do. That even though you might not be super happy with the results, um, just to encourage you to try out the things that you said, you know, that maybe you were writing about, but and to just get them done. So here's to you, cheers to you.